The reason the Lord declares to the Pharisees and the scribes that they will die in their sins is because they continue to think in an earthly way. And so the Lord has spent a great part of his public ministry trying to convince them of one truth, that he is the Son of God, co-equal with the Father in all things. Indeed, in today's gospel, he declares two times that I am, which was first spoken to Moses from the burning bush. But yet, in their obstinacy, they still fail to see with supernatural eyes. And so, they will fail to see the value of what our Lord is specifically referring to at all times, his coming death. For if we look upon it as merely in human ways, we, could, we would consider it quite a waste. For the Pharisees and the scribes certainly were aware of the power, of the power both of the Lord's preaching and the power that he, wor he worked through miraculous cures. But not knowing he had come to offer his sacred humanity for the salvation of souls, they would see no value in his crucifixion. And indeed, in our modern world, we have the same mentality about. They see no value in the suffering of Christ because they fail to see that he is the Son, that he is the Son of God, co-equal with the Father in all things. And so, it is always the crux of the matter. Not that Christ is denied by a good majority of the world. Even his enemies point out that there is too much evidence to prove that he existed. But what is always refuted is his claim to be God, because if he claims to be God and he proves it, then we too must follow the way that he taught in that way was to not consider the things of this world, but to use everything of, of, in this world in light of the supernatural faith that is to be our God, and that, that is to be our guide. And so, except for save for a very few, most especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, who never asked that question, why did God come into the world in order that he may be slaughtered? Because she knew from her meditations on the Old, Test the Old Testament that truly the Son of God, when he came into the world, would be the sacrifice of sin. And so, if there is much horror in the crucifixion, there is also much beauty because the crucifixion of our Lord reconciles mankind to God the Father. And so the mother would willingly sacrifice her maternal rights over the son in order that beauty may be restored to all souls. And so she did so both in sorrow and in joy, knowing that her sacrifice over her son would be necessary in order to accomplish the will of the Father. And then there is that good Saint Joseph who also came to understand this mystery that was unfolding in the life of Christ on earth in a most profound way. And so he too understood that it was necessary. And so when it was time, he would bow out of the mystery in order that he would not have to stand up and take the place of Christ as the legal and lawful uh, heir to the throne of David at the time of the crucifixion. And so Saint Joseph and Our Lady enter into that mystery in a most profound way, and we too are called to enter into the mystery of his suffering. But in order to do that, we must be thoroughly convinced that he was not only the Son of Man, but he was also the Son of God, and so his sacrifice alone is worthy to reconcile all of creation to God the Father. And so let us strive not to look with the eyes of the Pharisees and the scribes, always considering in worldly terms. And indeed, we see even in the first disciples and even in the apostles, this mentality. For is not Saint Peter, until he comes to that profound understanding, always trying to redirect the power and the authority that he sees in the Lord? And yet, when he would come to full stature himself, knowing the value of suffering, he too would never ask again that question as to why God has called us to suffer and sacrifice in this life,
but only would pray for the grace in order to do it. And so, in our weakness, we must always and everywhere pray that we overcome our sinful inclinations, our sins, and all that would lead us away from Mount Calvary. For many were gathered at the Lord's crucifixion on Good Friday, but very few were participants in the Mass. Physically they were there, but in their minds and in their hearts, they were walking away from Christ at that very moment as he was reconciling the world to himself. And that is why our Lord tells them they will die in their sins. For he says, even when I am lifted up, you will realize that I am. But at that time, most of them had been become so hardened that even then a certain blindness would come over them. And of course, our Lord is referring back to that first reading in which it is prophesied that the Son of Man would be list, lifted up with the seraph serpent as the chosen people were in exile in the desert. And so Christ has done all things, most especially he has left us all the evidence necessary to come to that conclusion that he truly was the Son of Man through the Virgin Mary and the Son of God because of his eternal origins with God the Father. And so he is that perfect sacrifice that reconciles the world to all things. And so let us strive in imitation of good Saint Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary never to ask that question that was never on their lips, that is, why is this to be done? For they knew full well it was necessary to be done for the salvation of the world. But let us always pray that we too may have the grace to enter into this mystery as St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary entered into the mystery so that the cross will never become a scandal to us as it always becomes eventually when we begin to question the value of it. That is something the Mother of God would never have done for she knew the value was the reconciliation of all mankind with the God from whom they took their existence and the God to whom they are called to return.